Hello, hello, welcome to episode zero of Your Hearth at Home. I am so grateful that you are here. So today's episode is different than episodes that you'll see going forwards in this space, simply because this episode is one about me, to provide you with a bit of context about my journey and where I'm coming from on this path. And so that being said, um, I do share in a space of vulnerability. And with that, I chose to record on a walk, which is an activity in a space that I've found very sacred recently. Um, So the audio quality for this episode is not great. And I want to say that out of the gate, episodes moving forwards are definitely not recorded outdoors or on a walk. Um, they are recorded with really high quality equipment and they're very clear. So I would ask that um, you give this episode just a little bit of slack as I move forward in vulnerability and share with you a bit about my journey. Um, And moving forwards, we'll be moving in a space of high quality audio. So I hope that you get out of this as much as I did um, in sharing and I wish you and send you so much love and I hope that you enjoy. Namaste. Hello, hello, beautiful soul. So, episode zero, I'd love to have you join me on a walk. We'll see how this audio goes. Um, This is being recorded during the self-isolation period of um, the coronavirus pandemic. And so I've been finding some real joy in a daily walk. And so today I invite you on a walk with me, hoping that it's not too windy that you can't see how it goes. So episode zero. I feel it's necessary to share a bit about myself, um, a bit about my healing journey and a bit about what's brought me to where I am today because it's pretty empowering to be able to share one story in the hopes that it might be of assistance in any way, shape or form to someone else. And so that's what brings me here today to share with you about what's been present for me and my journey so far. And so to begin, I mean, I, I grew up in Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada, uh, had a really, really wonderful childhood, um, grew up, went to school, all was quite, I would suggest, um, uneventful as a general statement. I went to an all-girls private school for 13 years, so that was definitely an interesting um, experience to really grow up with a group of people really from age four all the way through to graduation. So definitely an interesting experience and ultimately a wonderful one. Um, I graduated from high school, went to university, graduated with a degree in environmental studies uh, with a focus on sustainable development. And I really, really enjoyed post-secondary. I found my passion, right? Um, It was just really beautiful to learn about um, the environment and how to protect our planet from the standpoint of uh, daily activity and um, just tangible actions that we can take. So I really, really enjoyed that course content and I came out of university um, ready to rock and roll and... um, So at that time, 
I was just working um, here and there. And it was shortly after then, it was in 2014, so actually quite shortly after then, that um, trauma rocked me. Um, I won't get into that now. Um, it's interesting, the healing journey. Slowly but surely, we're ready to peel back and reveal layers. And so tuning in, I'm not ready to share that yet. Who knows what will come? Um, but essentially, trauma rocked my world in 2014. And from there, that is what I consider to be the beginning of my healing journey. Because prior to then, I was coasting, you know, life was good. Life was fine. I mean, there was nothing really, there was nothing really bad happening. It just was like life was going. And then 2014 hit and my experience changed dramatically. And essentially the, the, the crux of it was that I did not have the tools or understanding to be able to process the emotion and the trauma that quickly became present in my body. I had no idea what I was doing. And because I had no idea what I was doing, essentially I suppressed everything that I felt because I didn't know what else to do. And in suppression, I also reached for things that would numb me. I looked for everything external to me um, because, of course, I had no internal tools to manage. So um, the prime um, numbing agent that I reached to was alcohol. And I've never, like prior to this, I wouldn't have considered myself you know, an abnormal drinker, if there is such a thing, I'm not quite sure. Um, I was kind of a binger, you know, going out Friday nights, birthdays, that kind of thing, and drinking quite heavily. I wasn't one to, you know, have a glass of wine with dinner, like drink moderately. Um, when I drank, I drank hard. So at this point, with alcohol being extremely available, I was over the age of majority and certainly able to um, get it at my uh, leisure. I turned to that as my medicine and I self-medicated for many years and it quickly, very, very rapidly turned into a dependence. And so at this point, it, At this point, it's interesting to note that um, I continued to function quite um, proficiently in my life. Um, I continued to go to work, continued to pay bills. Um, so my external world was quite, well, I mean, I'm not sure. I, I know that people started to get worried about me after a while. Um, in my eyes, my external world was fairly um, unchanged and my internal world was absolutely crumbling. Uh, so I continued to self-medicate um, with alcohol with um, heavier dosages and frequencies. Um, obviously at the beginning, my tolerance was relatively low, so it didn't take too much too often to numb what I was feeling. And eventually, I mean, it got to the point where it was consistent. It was consistent um, dosing, I would suggest. So I could go into, you know, all of the stories and the craziness and the people that I hurt. All of that was present in my experience, in my addiction. Um, but that's not the point of why I'm sharing this. I'm sharing this because 
a lot of us, I, I have come to realize, experience this internal turmoil. And a lot of us don't have the tools. They, we, not that we don't have the tools. It's that we don't know how to harness the tools that we innately have in our bodies to manage these things that, as they come up. Because it's part of the human experience to experience trauma. And it's part of the human experience to have blockages of energy in the body and imbalances. And the truth is, what I've come to learn is that we are our own healers. We just need to be equipped with the tools to do the job and the understanding to do that job. And so that's why I share this story because I want you to know where I've been to where I am now. So in the depth of my addiction, I started to see things falling apart. Um, my functionality as an alcoholic was starting to fray. Um, things were starting to fall through the cracks and things were starting to go wrong. And I saw this and I'm grateful that I saw this and decided that it was time to stop drinking because that's what I thought was my problem. I thought alcohol was my problem. I didn't realize that my lack of tools to manage my actual issue, which was trauma, was my problem. So I thought alcohol was my problem. And with that being said, I um, moved to stop drinking. Relapse is a part of my story. Um, I did have a few attempts to stop drinking unsuccessfully. I'm grateful to say that my first day that without alcohol um, in my current um, stint of sobriety was April 13th, 2017. And so that means that as of recording this, I am coming up on three years in um, my sobriety journey, which I am beyond, beyond grateful for. I'm very grateful. So, <clears throat> so when I stopped drinking, as I kind of alluded to, I didn't actually solve my problem because my problem was not alcohol. My problem was not having the tools to manage the turmoil that was within. And so essentially, when I stopped drinking, I replaced drinking with busyness. And busyness became my new addiction. My schedule was full, was absolutely fell to the brim every minute had something in it and I overworked myself at work and then after work I scheduled all of these activities and these things and um, it, uh, it was a tough time and I didn't actually realize it because I wasn't drinking so I thought that I was okay And so, one of these things that I kept myself busy with, I, um, I signed up for a soap and candle making class um, in East Vancouver and attended that and that just absolutely blew my mind. I couldn't believe that I could make these things with my own two hands. And um, so that became just, and, like, I was magnetized to it. It was, it was an undeniable pull. And so I just started doing it. I started 
pouring soaps and candles and quickly realized that I couldn't do either of those two things with any regularity um, without selling them or giving them away because essentially I was becoming a soap and candle hoarder. So I started a small business called Red Cedar Studio and started participating at markets and um, selling my wares here and there. And it was a lot of fun. And um, the energetic investment that I made in myself, that I believed in myself, that I could even do this, that people would even want what I made. But you know, even as I say that, it wasn't even me, right? Like, for me, what I've come to realize is that my highest power comes to me in plants. And these these soaps and candles that I were make, was making, they were so pure. Like, these really beautiful, pure ingredients um, with these earth energies in them. But there's just no denying it. And... Not only was I making them and working with them that way, but I started exclusively work, like using my own candles and my own soaps on my body. And this is a huge part of my story. Um, just using truly all natural products on my body, made with love and intention and respect for the environment and for the bodies on which they are applied. Um, just huge, huge healing in, in those products. I had no idea at the time. Um, this, has, this has come to my awareness much later. Um, but this is what kind of started at this point. It's, it started at this point when I started to make my own soaps and candles. So at this point in my story, I was still using busyness as my, um, my distraction, my outlet. And essentially, in 2019, I felt breakdown approaching. And it was a similar... It was a similar... <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> I'm puppy is being defensive. Hello, puppy. <laughs> oh, so, oh, and then we've got ice cream truck coming. Oh my goodness. You guys are just getting serenaded. Um, but yeah, essentially, I, I, ex I felt breakdown approaching. And it was a similar feeling to when I first chose to stop drinking. It was... Yeah, this impending doom, if you will. I'm not quite sure how else to describe it, but it was just, I felt this doom coming. And so since I had actually experienced that feeling before, I recognized it quite quickly. And it was at this point that without really trying, um, self-development entered into my sphere. Um, my friend, my beautiful friend, had been taking some courses and had nothing but beautiful things to say about um, the people who were facilitating them. And it sounded very interesting. And so I, I went for it. I thought, what the heck? There's no point in not um, getting on a call. And so I did. I, I got on a call and ended up enrolling myself in an eight-week program followed by a seven-day intensive immersion experience. Um, I was on a call and within a week I was committed and paid and within two weeks, I believe, the eight-week program started. So it was a very quick turnaround time and again, an experience of investment in self. So just these energetic investments, I, as I reflect on my story, I, I definitely notice the energetic investments and the shoots of growth that occur after them. 
Um, so I completed this eight week program, which honestly turned my life um, upside down, like a complete 180 of my life. I, my anxiety that I had been experiencing, that I used to use alcohol to manage, that I was now um, trying to manage without any medication, um, it essentially, for all intents and purposes, it disappeared. Um, when I started to use some of these tools that I was introduced to in this eight week program. And um, from there, my, I was just, I was blown away. I was blown away at the, at the power of my breath, you know, just doing breath work, at the power of, the, the power that lies in the food that I put in my body and gut health. Like, these are, these are not things that I had to, you know, seek really externally to me. It was my own choices and my own practices that I had full and complete control over. And they weren't even that expensive. The food wasn't, the food wasn't even that expensive, like, in comparison to what I was already spending. And breathing is certainly free. So I was just... My perspective shifted so drastically over these eight weeks and just this energetic investment in myself um, and just this amazing belief, this belief in myself that was fostered through my ability to complete this program to the absolute best of my abilities. I poured my heart into that program and into myself, like honestly. it, I poured my heart into myself and the result was epic like it was unbelievable the results that I experienced when I invested in myself it was a 180 and so at that point I ended up quitting my job because I knew that my heart was in my little my small business even though I wasn't, you know, what an economist would call very successful at it. (laughs) Um, I knew my heart was there. And um, so I quit a job I loved, another energetic investment in myself. And then I flew to Bali for a seven day um, intense immersion experience of healing. And yes, radical, radical shifts occurred in this, in this space again triggered by just an intense energetic investment in myself not only money but time effort and absolute surrender to the process in that container and this is where I met the beautiful plant spirit of cacao which has just again shifted everything for me um It was in this beautiful space that an absolutely wonderful facilitator introduced me to her spirit and um, I was, again, like it's that magnetization, that undeniable attraction and so I went with it and I bought cacao in Bali, brought it home to BC and started to cultivate this practice because now I wasn't working. Right, I wasn't working a full-time job. I had already committed to myself that I was going to be doing my own thing. So I did my own thing. And I didn't rush myself and I didn't panic much. (laughs) Let's be real, I definitely panicked. Um, But but for the most part, um, ultimately, the overarching theme is that I allowed myself to integrate from the intense healing experience that I had been on and I did that with cacao as a beautiful and gentle energetic support and yes profound shifts and the thing is they're subtle shifts so the immersion in Bali was my last um, intense immersion healing experience and I have like the shifts 
since then have been dramatic and subtle. So just this beautiful, this beautiful outlook that there's so much healing to be had in these intense immersion experiences and in the gentle and the subtle daily practices. Like this is, this is just so present for me. And in this gentle and subtle daily practice that I was cultivating with cacao after I got home from Bali, I was called to learn more about the plant. And so I flew to Costa Rica and spent time with a plant medicine facilitator there and learned and, you know, sat with the plants and um, huge, huge downloads came through on that trip. And it's, it's these, it's this trust that comes from investing in oneself. Like regardless of whether it's my story or, you know, your story, when one invests in themselves, time, money, effort, surrender, whatever that form of energetic investment is, when one does that, the universe balances it. The universe pays you back. And this is so, so present for me because I made these energetic investments in myself and I continue to do so and I continue to grow and expand through these these investments that come back my way, essentially. And... It's through these practices and through these investments and through my willingness to learn that I have cultivated practices and relationships with various tools that allow me to manage my inner landscape. Because it is not always consistent. Like, yes, it is far more steadfast and steady than it has ever been before. I am much more resilient than I have ever been before. And that's because of the practices that I put in place. I have bad days. There are ebbs and flows. There's no doubt about it. You can't have the best of days without the worst of days. And I understand that. And that's why it's so beautiful that it's okay. That it's okay to have bad days. It's okay to not be okay. Because then that means that sometimes you are okay. And so the business and my life have just shifted and evolved. And essentially now I am called to share this, share my story and these tools with others and I am by no means an expert in the vast majority of modalities that are out there. I probably don't even know about the vast majority of modalities that are out there. I would consider myself relatively new to the path. That being said, I am tapped into this amazing network of people, this amazing beautiful network of people that are willing to share that also want to see this this human race be happy and be healthy because there's an understanding that we are all one and when someone's not doing well we're all not doing well and So this is what I'm called to now. I get to share my own medicine, for which I am utterly grateful. I get to share my medicine soaps, my invocation candles that I pour with such love, respect, and intention. And I get to share cacao. I get to share that spirit with anybody who's looking for her. And I get to connect you with people who are in my network 
who might have something to offer you, who might have some kind of insight that supports you on your journey. And my message is about investment in self and the power, the sheer power that comes with investment in self. Again, it doesn't have to necessarily be money in form of energetic exchange, although that is definitely a potent one. Let me tell you, when you invest money in yourself, holy crap, it's powerful. So is time, so is surrender, and so is effort. And these are all available to you. And so my message is one of investment in self, and my hope My intention is that this message reaches people before they hit breakdown. Because the story for a lot of people that are in my circles currently is one of breakdown, right? We've gotten to the bottom of our barrel. We've, you know, gotten, we've hit rock bottom and there was no choice but to go up right? We were pushed. We were pushed there because there was no choice. And my intention with this podcast and with the work that I do is that the message reaches people before they get to that point where they have no choice. That a life that's fine is fine. And if you're happy with that, like if you're truly deep down happy with that, then that's perfect. And if you're not deep down happy with that, and if something in your soul is calling you forward to step up for yourself in whatever way that looks like for you, my intention is that I deliver a message that you're worthy of that, that you are capable of that, and that you don't need to continue going down, sliding down the scale in order to be forced into this path. You can choose to go onto this path. And you just might save yourself some time and struggle and come to a space of happiness and joy and bliss sooner than you would have otherwise. So I am very, very grateful to be witnessed by you on this podcast today. I have not been open about my um, alcoholism and I'm not, I just wasn't called to share uh, before now. And I guess the truth of it is, as I see it in this moment, I wasn't called to share it before now because I never felt really sober. I never actually felt sober in the first two years of my sobriety because I hadn't done the work, right? And that's why I felt the breakdown approaching was because I hadn't done the work. So why, like I just, how can I speak to something I hadn't experienced? And now having the tools employing the tools, investing in myself, believing in myself, and working on myself, I've come to the point where I am so, so grateful to say that I am sober. I'm truly sober. I'm not just dry. I'm actually sober now. In my third year of quote-unquote sobriety. And... I'm sober, truly, because I'm at peace within. And there are so many, so many tools available to each and every one of us. And everyone's path is going to look different. There are so many ways to climb this mountain of self-love, of journeying back to who you really are and what's really important to you. There's so many ways to walk this path. And so that brings me back to 
why I'm here now on this podcast, and that is to hopefully connect you, be the bridge between you and thought leaders and those with embodied personal practices in different modalities so that you may bolster your path and find what it is you might be looking for or what it is you might not even have known you were looking for. Great example for that, uh, of that for me is with Kakao. Didn't even know I was looking and she found me. So with that being said, I am again very, very grateful um, for you witnessing me in this episode zero of From the Heart. Um, oh, excuse me, that's my company name. Uh, <laughs> I'm grateful for you witnessing me in this episode zero of Your Heart at Home. Um, I hope that this provides you with more context from me and where I'm coming from and my journey and why I do what I do. And from here on, we're going to be hearing from a lot of really, really amazing souls. And I am so very honored and grateful to be able to do this work. And yeah, I'm so grateful. So with that, I will let you go and I hope that you have a beautiful morning, afternoon, evening, whenever you catch this, wherever you catch this. I'm sending you so much love. Namaste. Thank you so much for tuning in to episode zero of Your Hearth at Home. I am so excited to share with you some of the amazing, amazing souls that are already lined up to share their magic with you in this space. So I will see you in one week for episode one of Your Hearth at Home.